What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. This will be the spoiler free review for Deadpool and Wolverine, which is directed and written, co-written by, I should say, Sean Levy, uh, who co-wrote it with Ryan Reynolds and several others, including Zeb Wells. This is starring Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Emma Corrin, and several others, because of course there's cameos and you'll have to wait and see the movie for those. So this film is revolving around Deadpool, of course, a listless Wade Wilson toils away in civilian life with his days as the morally flexible mercenary Deadpool behind him. But when his home world faces an existential threat, Wade must reluctantly suit up again with an even more reluctant Wolverine. Now, Deadpool and Wolverine is a never ending adrenaline rush of a film. I have to say a superhero fans gnarliest fantasy come to life is what I would say. I don't think I've seen a more engaging superhero film since No Way Home. But then again, the MCU has been at a bit of a low point. That'll be funnier if you are listening to this after watching it. You're probably already laughing, but that'll be funnier once you see the movie. The film maintains the tones of the previous two films while ser serving up a heartfelt story centered on our titular characters. Now, enough of the hyperbole because the movie isn't flawless, but still, it's a great film nonetheless, I would say. Wade Wilson is enjoying retirement. Well, I guess enjoying isn't the right word. He's getting by feeling very unfulfilled and directionless as a salesman. But all of that changes once the time variance authority steps in. The anchor to Wade's universe being absent is causing his reality to go extinct. This leads to him crossing paths with Wolverine, and this team-up leads to some of the most entertaining sequences the MC has ever offered. First things first, the screenplay does a terrific job establishing Wade's current life before the TVA arrives, allowing his desire to find purpose resonate with viewers, which makes his return to the Deadpool role that much more rewarding. Who doesn't want to live up to expectations and make their loved ones proud? But most importantly, make themselves proud and not feel like a failure and be content with who they are. Be comfortable in your own skin. Uh, Not the most original story, I would say, when it comes to stuff like that and the themes. But the themes and the story do resonate because of the execution. It kept it compelling. Wolverine being from a different timeline is despised in his universe, but Deadpool hopes to give him a shot at redemption. Not much was needed to be done here because I was invested in seeing Logan redeem himself from the get go due to nostalgia. It immediately hurt me knowing that this version of Logan was despised and I'm sure most viewers will feel the same way. The setup for both heroes getting together is so relatable and watching them find hope in each other through all of the blood drenched sequences and raunchy jokes didn't disappoint. Another highly effective quality of the screenplay is the self aware jokes and commentary mostly directed at Disney buying Fox. And of course, the always hilarious fourth wall breaking. But sometimes the jokes were a bit much, not gonna lie, some things didn't land. Deadpool and Wolverine find themselves in the void, a wasteland for those left for, from dead timelines, I believe. Here they run into problems with Professor X's sister named Cassandra Nova. Now I will say as a villain, she's engaging enough thanks to the brutality showcase when she appears, but her role as a threat could have been stronger. When present, Cassandra can be quite intimidating. It's just not explored in a fashion that makes Deadpool and Wolverine's drive to beat her that much more rewarding. It feels a little hollow because it's like Cassandra is barely riled up as a threat, a legitimate threat for me to feel is something to take serious to a degree. Something was just missing. I don't know really how to explain that aspect of her. It's just like that aspect of the screenplay probably I would argue is the weakest since she was supposed to be the credible threat that was against them. Another aspect of the screenplay that fell flat came down to some of the cameos, one of which was spoiled in the marketing and they amounted to nothing in the overall, well, I don't want to say amounted to nothing, but it's just very insignificant. Mostly just nostalgia is what they all were there for. And it didn't, it, it just didn't carry the significance it should have had. It was just all mostly carried by nostalgia. And that's where it started to weigh off because the story is progressing and I'm going, okay, well, why are you still here? What purpose are you for now? I smiled because it was nice to see you but you can kick rocks and it shouldn't feel like that because you're clearly going to stick around. So the movie and the story needed to do a lot more with a certain cameo appearance. So going into the direction, I would say that Sean Levi should be quite proud of himself because I go as far to say he's delivered the strongest superhero movie of the year at this point from the opening credit sequence, which mind you is just a simply brilliant sequence. One of the most beautiful opening title sequences I've seen in quite a while. It truly set the tone for what was to come. Anyway, Levi directed the hell out of this film is what I'm getting at. It's heartfelt, hilarious, and the action sequences are to die for. 
The action is easy to follow thanks to solid camera work, which I'll always appreciate considering the incoherent message you can often get when you get into the editing room and you start. It's just a whole nother topic. I won't <laughs> go into that. The soundtrack for this movie. Phenomenal. A lot of cool songs. I would I love hearing one song from Avril Lavigne because I have been trying to stay away from spoilers for this project. So when I heard that Avril Lavigne song, I was just smiling ear to ear at my song. I think it's one of her best songs. At times, you could argue that the soundtrack didn't fit the stuff on the screen. But when it came to the final sequence, a certain particular song definitely works to get you teary-eyed a bit because the story has earned this for the two characters and then ultimately you get some surprises after that sequence but again you'll have to wait and see what i'm talking about now when it comes to the performances uh reynolds and jackman their chemistry in this movie is unbelievable they are just incredible together they bounce off of one another so well uh jackman gives one of his best performances i would say as wolverine and reynolds of course doing his thing as deadpool erica i think her name is who was playing cassandra she is absolutely gorgeous for one thing and her facial expressions are one of the things that was keeping the character intimidating even if i felt again that the threat of the character was a little bit hollow when she's on screen she makes the most of it she is a phenomenal actress i don't think i've seen much of her work but she did a great job in this role now the action sequences again very breathtaking stuff i'll never forget because of the bloodshed the camera work cinematography all of it was great i would say the pacing is solid and yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine is a solid movie. I would give this a 8 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.